how to make acorn dye. Hello, my name is Jersey. First, you need to go outside and gather some acorns that have fallen to the ground. I know mine are ready when I hear them hit the tin roof. So Mr. Buck, enjoying some acorns. This roaster is only made for making dyes. I have a walnut hull dye, look up there. Now I show you how I use this. I also use this for dyeing wool and alpaca. So this is never made for food and I usually only do this outside. Today I'm going to make some acorn dye. I'm gonna make it two ways. One, I'm gonna take this jar full of acorns that fell to the ground. I'm gonna leave them whole. I'm gonna add the water and let it simmer a total of two hours. Then tomorrow I'm going to do another batch, but I'm going to take the same amount and I'm going to grind them. And I will show you if it makes a difference if you need to grind these. And I'm going to measure, which I never do, but this way I can do an identical test. I'm gonna do the same amount of water, same amount of acorns, same amount of heat, same amount of time. There's one, two. So that's two times the amount of water to acorns. Keep the lid on it at all times, put it on 300 degrees for one hour. And here it is exactly two hours later. One hour ago, I turned it down to 250 degrees and it was just very, very light tan. Can you see how dark it is now? I'm going to cut the power off, unplug it and let it cool naturally and I will be keeping the lid on the whole time while it is cooling down. Here it is 24 hours later. I'm going to take all the acorns out, put them in this bowl. I put a little strainer inside the funnel and then I'm gonna fill it up with this jar. And here we are all done. I got this full and this little bit. The acorns just turned white. They are not moldy. I don't know why they do that. I'm gonna give them to the deer tonight on their rock where we feed them almost every day. Make sure you date it, what it is, batch number one. And this will be the second batch. I have the same amount of acorns as I did yesterday. I'm gonna grind them in my Vitamixer. I'm only gonna do a little at a time. That is the last of it. That filled whole pitcher full to the top. And this will be for batch number two. Batch number two, same thing as yesterday. It was filled and we ground it. Pour it all in here. A couple few whole ones in there, doesn't matter. Just like yesterday, I'm gonna add two full measuring cups of water. There's one, two. I'm gonna put it on 300, one hour. Come out in one hour, turn it down to 250. For another full hour. Meanwhile, keep the lid on it. I'll stir it once or twice. I'll cut the power off and I'll let it sit 24 hours and let it cool with the lid on. And then tomorrow I'll come back and we'll take it out and put it into another jar to show you the difference in colors. And here it is exactly one hour later, just like yesterday, I'm gonna show you the color. Do you remember yesterday, what it looked like after one hour? Actually, this is batch one yesterday after two hours. This is what it looks like now. It does look darker, a lot darker than yesterday. So now that it's been one hour, I'm gonna turn the heat down to 250 for one more hour, and then I'm gonna shut it off and let it cool overnight. Okay, here it is two hours later. I have never done the ground, but obviously it has sucked up all the liquid. So if you are going to do this method, batch number two, I would do three to four times the amount of water because I don't even know how I'm gonna strain this. This is really thick. There's no liquid really left that's liquid liquid. Very thick, stuck on the sides. And I'm going to fill this up with boiling water and I'm gonna pour it in there and I'm gonna turn the power off and let it cool down overnight. Because otherwise there's really nothing I can strain out of this. I would definitely do four times the amount of water to acorns. So we added two full jars. I would absolutely do four. I'm gonna go in to put one more in right now and, and turn the power off and let it sit overnight to cool. Here we have one container of boiling water in the house. That definitely has helped. Now tomorrow when I go to strain this, at least I'll have some liquid. Yes, it watered it down a little bit, but really there was nothing else I could do. It was, the acorns really absorbed the water and it could absorb it again. Gave it a tan color versus batch one. Those are two different colors. This is almost like a black walnut hull. This one is. And then this one is like a rusty tannish color. Two totally different 
types. Now, personally, what I do, I do batch one all the time. I'll leave it in there a week. Sometimes I'll come out and turn it on for an hour, add more water. I never measure and I never do it the same twice. Sometimes I'll leave it in there a month and it might get a little mold on it. I just scrape it off. I don't care. That's the way I do my walnut hulls. I just wanted to show you the difference between batch one and batch two. This I would never do. It's just too much extra work. It's something that doesn't appeal to me, me personally, but I wanted to give you that option. And we'll be back tomorrow, 24 hours later, and we will strain this. Maybe I could have lowered the temperature to 150, 200, and just simmered it a little less temperature. But in order to do a beta test where I did one and two exactly the same, except for grinding the acorns, I really wanted to hold it true. And here it is the next morning. As you can see, it's still way too thick. I'm going to add another container of water, but I'm not going to heat up the pan. Just very hot water. So that's a total of four of these. And it's really not diluting the color. Otherwise, I won't have any way of getting any liquid out. I will come back this afternoon when it's been exactly 24 hours, and then I'll strain it through a jelly bag. And we are back. Finally, this is 24 hours from yesterday. Still don't think we're going to get a lot. I'm going to try to skim as much as I can off and put it through a jelly bag. And skim the liquid off the top first, because most of it is still acorn mash. Better respect your time. I'm going to go ahead push this all through. I skimmed off almost all the liquid off the top that I could. Right now what's left is sludge. I don't know if I'm going to put that through. That might be enough for me. This would take hours and hours to drip. I don't even know if it's going to be worth it and it will be full of sediment. So for now I am just going to leave it like this. Let it drip for an hour until all this liquid is pressed through the bag then we'll come back and do a recap. And here are two exact piles that I'm going to put in the acorn batches, one and batch number two. Here's some wool that I spun. This is cotton thread that I use in my weaving. This is natural cotton that I use in my dolls for stuffing. This is Augsburg. This is half of a pair of linen pants, 100% linen. And here is some 100% wool from a pair of pants. I'm going to soak both of these in the same temperature of very, very hot water for about half hour. Then I'm going to heat up batch number one place everything in there for the same amount of half hour then I will heat up batch number two same thing and then when I get done I will put it through this wall hanging wool that I just made last week like I did the onion dye but I'm going to use the acorn dye for this and I will show you the before and after so this is the before and that's the back I will insert the before and after at the end of this video and I forgot to mention this is camel from a jacket I'm going to over dye that one too and here I have them sitting in about 170 degree water I just put a weight on it so it holds it down I'm gonna let it absorb the water for about a half an hour wring it out and then put it in the hot acorn dye here it is almost exactly two weeks later I'm going to strain it off any mold pieces that are in there and I'll let that heat up to a simmer and add my wet hot fibers and let it sit 30 minutes with the heat off and I turn the heat off about 158 159 cotton yarn wool that I spun Augsburg linen camel and wool I don't want to agitate it just in case some of the things felt I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes a quick comparison before I do batch number two. This is the wool out of the dye. This is wet. This is Augsburg. This is camel. Wool, the cotton dyed, not dyed. Cotton dyed, not dyed. Linen, not dyed died. Batch number two. I just wanted to show you the beautiful chestnut color. Really different than the batch number one. It's drained about that much sediment out of it. Definitely like a reddish chestnut color. And here are the final comparisons. The blue dots, which I'll keep on the left, is batch number one, batch number two. Definitely batch number two is darker. That was cotton. This is wool. Batch number two again, cotton batting. This is batch one, batch two. 
Batch two is a little darker. This is linen, batch one, batch two. Batch two is definitely darker. Oxenberg, batch one, batch two. Batch two is definitely darker with more red tones. And these are the wool pants. One, batch two. Batch two was darker and it had more of a red chestnut color. As you can see, compared to this white towel, this is what the this was like. Almost all of this was like this, except for the Oxenberg and the camel. Here is the before wall hanging, and here is the after. It has a little light reddish tint to it. I use batch number one, and I do like it. It toned it down just a little bit. In conclusion, batch number one was easier, but batch number two created a darker reddish color, which I liked, but I will still never make batch number two. It was too much work. I cut out a lot to keep this video short and to respect your time. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope this tutorial was informational for you whether you'd like to try acorn dyeing.